The idea with the Tuttle Brief History series is that they're supposed to be accessible to the general reader, but they also have to incorporate the very best in modern scholarship. And that's why I've taken three threads from contemporary academic trends, and I've made them run right the way through the book to give a, re a really fresh perspective on Chinese history. One of them is climate, the impact of the environment on human history, because modern technology and modern methods allow us to do something we've never been able to do before, which is to pinpoint when a legendary flood on the Yellow River, for example, actually happened. It allows us to follow the fluctuations in rainfall and how that affects vegetation on the Mongol steppe and how that affects the movement of nomads and the breaking out of wars on the Chinese border. So we can do all of those things. And in fact, it's, it's fascinating and also quite terrifying when you realize that you can actually map the rise and fall of Chinese dynasties almost directly onto weather patterns. Um, and that has implications, of course, for anthropogenic climate change in modern times as well. Um, so that's one. Another one is women, because women tend to be marginalised in traditional Chinese histories. They always tell the stories of men in power fighting other men in power, and women get pushed to the sidelines as mothers and wives and kingdom-wrecking hussies like Yang Guifei. And uh, so I try and bring that all back in. I, I restore women to their central place in the narrative. They've got just as much right to be there as men. And I talk about the princess brides who were exiled to the borderlands to marry uh, nomad warlords. And I talk about the, the cross-dressing, sword-wielding um, revolutionary Chu Jin, who was executed as a terrorist in the early years of the 20th century. And I talk about the unknown red-haired woman who was buried in what is now the Taklamakan Desert uh, 3,800 years ago, because that's my third thread running throughout the book, is the ethnic diversity within China. Yes, there was a red-haired woman who died in Western China nearly 4,000 years ago. And the idea that there were, in the words of the poet, blue-eyed girls in the taverns of Chang'an, and the idea that China, before it became an empire, was a, a patchwork of different kingdoms and cultures is something that I think is really interesting. And so the ethnic diversity of China, the fact that there are a hundred million people in China who are not Han Chinese, the Tibetans, the Mongols, the Zhuang and the Uyghurs, these all contribute to Chinese history in their own individual ways. And also there's cultural diversity within China as well. When the Chinese government's own statistics say that 30% of the Chinese, 300 million people, don't speak standard Mandarin. They're not just talking about 5 million Mongols who speak the Mongolian language at home. They're talking about 80 million people in South China who speak Cantonese as their native topolect. Now, we're not supposed to call Cantonese a language in its own right, but it's as different from Mandarin as English is from Dutch. So there are incredible variations within modern China, and those are reflections and shadows and echoes of things that happened in Chinese history, and that's what I try to bring out in this book.